Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sports Half, your weekly dose of everything that happens in the sports half of the world. This is Rakshit and today I'm joined by Sanjay and we are here to talk about the FIFA World Cup. So Sanjay, what a yep. kick-ass World Cup it's been bro. It's been absolutely exciting and uh, um, you know it's great that it's happening in Qatar mm. uh, because being in India... Uh, we don't have to stay awake till 4am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Such peaceful <laughs> or timings. Yeah. 8.30, 5.30 during yeah, the group yeah. matches. Group stages were really fun because there were four matches on the trot. 3.30, yeah. 6.30, 9.30. That was good. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, so far, it's been an amazing World Cup. Yeah. Uh, the, the players have turned up, basically. I swear. Uh, there were a lot of questions like, oh, Winter World Cup, oh, Qatar is so hot, mm. this is going to work mid-season and all that. But I think the World Cup just takes precedence over everything. Yeah. And uh, so glad to see that it's turned out into a tournament that has, you yeah. know, uh, got everyone excited. Everyone excited. Once it started, I think all the talk about mm. uh, human rights, all yeah. of that kind of died down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can have your own opinion about it, I think, uh, with respect to that, saying uh, maybe Qatar should have never gotten it. Uh, but here we are, right? We are here at the quarterfinal stage now, today, yeah. uh, as of this recording. And uh, uh, all the big teams have turned up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one team uh, we expected in the beginning only that Germany might not be yeah. uh, probably the best team to look forward to. And sans Germany, I think everyone else has done a great job and um, they've, you know, all come together to give us this beautiful tournament. Yeah, uh, true. G- Germany did, uh, did not uh, play up to expectations, although our expectations weren't that high, like you said. Uh, but instead of Germany in mm. from that same group, uh, the team that went through was Japan, uh, topping the group. When you have Spain and Germany, killer shit, killer, killer, uh, great. Kamikaze, this <laughs> <laughs> Kamikaze straight into Germany. Hmm. Okay. Another uh, Asian team that probably we should talk about is definitely. Uh, South Korea, man. Like yeah. uh, they've shown glimpses in the past. Yeah. They are a good team. And they, uh, unlike Japan, who, you know, sit back, wait, and then hit the opponents when they're tired and the counter and stuff. Korea actually plays some good football, bro. Like, yeah. even on the even the match against Brazil, which they lost quite badly, yeah. they were still trying. They were still pushing forward, forward, forward. Maybe the reason why Brazil got so many goals in the end. Right. right. A little bit of uh, naivety, maybe? Yeah, towards, probably. Towards you know, the, yeah. In such a big tournament, mm. uh, you probably have to be a little adaptable with your game plan and all that. But it was nice to see an Asian team play that good football, you know, that yeah. the positive football that we all talk about these days. Yeah, and uh, South Korea hosted uh, hosted the World Cup back in 2002. Two, yeah. Right? And they did a decent job, mm. but they were major underdogs back then. Yeah. Uh, now, if you look at the team... Uh, you've got Hyungman Son, who is who is the player in the market. Like if you put him on the transfer market, you're getting hundred million for him, sure. minimum, yeah. minimum. Even if he has six months left on the contract, right? Uh, and another player uh, who did really well for South Korea and who who people don't talk much about, I think, was their defender, the centre back, the centre back who also plays for Napoli. Napoli yeah, yeah, uh, big man uh, replacing Koulibaly hmm. uh, in Napoli, of course, but. Again, he's turned up. South Korea has turned up. Uh, and they played... They didn't play like underdogs. Yeah, yeah, They yeah. came in saying, hey, we are a team to be reckoned with. Yeah. They beat Portugal to qualify. Yeah. yeah. So, that speaks a lot. Speaking of Asian teams beating uh, big teams like Portugal, of course, Japan uh, beating, uh, you know, Spain and Germany. Germany. Saudi Arabia beat Argentina. There's an Asian revolution oh, coming, yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. Iran, Iran beating Wales. Yeah, Iran beat Wales. Uh, South Korea drew against Uruguay. Th- these are top-class teams and we're showing that we're good enough on yeah, this stage. Definitely. Uh, great to see. Absolutely wonderful to see. Uh, very slow progress, more or less, in the last 10 years. Hmm. We have reached this place where we can talk about Asia being a dominant uh, continent. Having said that, quarter-final stage... Uh, we do not have any Asian team. 
yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> yeah the big boys have really taken care of that in the round of 16 mm. uh, but nice to see that man like uh, even though uh, they might not be here i'm sure they've left a lasting impact yeah. on the minds of their fans and the rest of the world who's watched so far so watch out Watch out, indeed. Uh, in four years' time, the World Cup is going to go to uh, the US. US. Uh, and post that, we don't know yet. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe an Asian team is going to host it and win it as well. Uh, yeah. Fingers crossed on that fingers one. Crossed, yeah. Right? Uh, anyways, let's now move on to the crux of the podcast, which is the quarterfinal lineup. And what a juicy uh, lineup we have. Oh, boy. Starting with Croatia versus Brazil. Yeah. How does Croatia beat Brazil? Please tell me. I mean, I think it has to be the way they did it last time. Take uh-huh. them all the way till the penalties. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. Uh, anything can happen <laughs> in the penalties. That's what they say, right? Yeah. I think that that has to be the way to go for them. Um, I mean, it's not that they can't score goals, uh, you know, when they're playing, yeah. when they're playing normal time. But... I think the best way for them to make sure that they get to the next stage is by, you know, uh, making sure they take the game long enough. Mm. Uh, probably penalties. I mean, they've got the they've some they've got something figured out for the penalties. Hundred like. <laughs> percent. In fact, uh, we were discussing this just before the podcast, yeah. right? Uh, last World Cup, Croatia round of sixteen penalties, uh, quarterfinals penalties. Semi-finals, extra time. Finals, they lost. Yeah. And this World Cup, round of 16, penalties. penalties already. And uh, quarterfinals, I am sure. Like, if I'm, I'm the Croatian manager, I'm telling my team to just stick it out uh, there for 120 minutes on the pitch. Mm. And uh, push it to penalties, see where things yeah. go. And that is especially because, because of the team that they're going to face, which is Brazil. Yeah. They are uh, pretty young and uh, in their minds, they want to finish it in the 90. Forget extra time. They yeah. want to finish it within the 90 minutes. Brazil, right? Yeah, Brazil. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm sure there will be some frustration even if it goes to extra time, which is only going to build up into even something more. And it's a team of young players. You've yeah. got Vinicius, you've got your Rafinha, you've got your Richarlison. I mean, mm. he's been scoring some great yeah, he, goals. He's turned but, into prime Ronaldo. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you can you can expect them to probably you know not uh, feel a lot of pressure during mm-hmm. the penalty shootout and I think uh, Croatia has got a lot of experienced campaigners out there bro yeah. you've got your uh, you've got your uh, Brozovic you've got your Luka Modric you've got Kovacic, Kovacic. Yep. Perisic Perisic. these guys yep. are calm up here yeah. uh, which is what. Uh, progress uh, help them progress all the way they did last time and i wouldn't be surprised for them to you know take the same route again yeah uh no doubt about that talking about brazil a little bit more mm. uh tournament favorites oh. for sure the way they, they have performed samba their way into my heart like, <laughs> yeah what beautiful football Some they've been beautiful playing football. uh yes. the the goals as well i mean uh, the Pinnacle of uh, World Cup goals was scored by Richarlison oh, this time. Gorgeous. Uh, it doesn't get better than that. And, <laughs> and I think we were all screaming. We were watching that game and losing our uh, marbles, basically, <laughs> with that goal. Uh, the team, Brazilian team in general, looks very balanced. A lot of, similarly, like how you said, Croatia has calm players. There are a lot of calm players there at the back, especially. Yeah, Thiago Silva. Yeah. Marquinhos, who's been captain of Oof. PSG uh, and he's, has been an experienced campaigner, I can say. He's pretty young, I think he's about 26, 27. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's been there, done that kind of a player yeah, so yeah, far. Yeah, for sure. Right? Uh, Thiago Silva as well. You got Alexandro, who's, I don't know, 37. He's been there for so many years. I don't know how, how old he is. He's not that old, but right. I, I don't think he's going to be playing, bro. You think so? Yeah, okay. he's injured. He's injured. Yeah, oh, wow. He's okay. injured. That's the reason why Danilo has been playing left back and right. they've been using Eder Militao as a as makeshift the, mm. right back. Still, what a what a what a player to come in to play for you <laughs> in the right back with Militao. Yeah. Uh, who who is the your who's your number one centre back in Real Madrid? Real Madrid. Yeah. Uh, Casemiro, Oof. another calm head. Yeah. Uh, you can't beat that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> there's nothing calmer, I guess. <laughs> nothing calmer than. 
<laughs> fire and ice the man is a combination of both yeah so yeah man coming to talking about like okay what do you think is going to happen what is your prediction for brazil versus croatia my prediction is um, in terms of score i don't know i really can't tell because if um, brazil get the first one then i don't know what can happen but if croatia get the first one then you again don't know what can happen okay <laughs> but one thing i can say for sure is that uh, Brazil is going to go all out at the defense of Croatia. Yeah. And they have to be really organized and communicate and be super super disciplined about the way they go yeah. about it for them to keep Brazil at bay, which is going to be a hard task. Like every man, every player should be where he's supposed to be otherwise yeah. Brazil is going to make a meal out of you guys. Like Absolutely. They've been they have been so silky with the way they played their football and, man uh, just before south korea game they have been like you said they have been so good without neymar without neymar exactly and neymar when he came back he looked like he was never gone yeah and, and he's he's going to be a key player for yeah. sure and he's playing down the middle as well mm. uh that's going to be interesting to watch uh because what happens right if croatia decides okay let's go to the penalties mm-hmm. we want to play for the penalties if that is their mindset they're going to sit back yeah uh when you sit back there there are few things that you can do which is play really wide uh, mm-hmm. with your wingers play really wide uh but when you play that there are going to be spaces in between for you to pick up yeah and who better than, than neymar, neymar to pick that up yeah and Agreed. neymar is a man i'm sure is going to be a man possessed Uh, leading up from quarterfinals to the finals if they are going to reach that okay. because uh, a few years ago he was injured hmm. yeah uh, the key crunch match. game yeah. he was injured germany if you remember that 7-1 uh, so so yeah i think brazil is definitely going to go through yeah. for me in my opinion mm-hmm. going to score a lot of goals in fact an aging croatia experience mm. sure but experience is not going to get you goals yeah agreed it it can help you keep a lead mm. but it's not going to help you keep uh, get goals so for me that's brazil man yeah i mean i yeah like i said i think if brazil gets the first one uh, it's very hard to see croatia come back from that uh, let's see what what happens <laughs> i'm i'm really excited for that game yeah So okay on that note let's move on to the next game which is Netherlands versus Argentina Tina <laughs> So uh there's only one man to talk about when we talk about Argentina Lionel Messi Cucutini <laughs> <laughs> So uh Messi's been he's 35 37 38 36 Oh Are uh, Ronaldo is thirty seven, thirty eight. Oh, so. Ronaldo is thirty seven. Yeah. Okay. Then Messi is thirty five. Thirty five, thirty six. Then, yeah. right? So uh, pretty old, hmm. but he's been bringing it to the World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. I think he's been, if not the best, one of the best players in the World Cup so far. So far, yeah. Uh, he's been absolutely killing it. Uh, maybe not so much with the goals. Yes, with the goals, crucial goals, he's got. but even without the goals he's influencing the game beautifully like so many chances he's created that uh, i mean argentina should be finishing better mm. and that is one thing that will play a big role for them right. in this match against right. netherlands it's the finishing it's kind of missing uh, julian alvarez uh, yeah he's got some good goals but again still a little yeah. sus when it comes to finishing and lautaro to has been an absolute miss Yeah. Uh, I don't know how he plays so well for Inter. Yeah. But uh, it's been not that great. I mean, he's not lived up to the expectation of Definitely. I, I mean, that. there are comparisons being drawn to Higuain mm. uh <laughs> from from the 2018 World Cup. 14? 14? Yeah. J- 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 Brazil. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. 2014. So I I really hope Argentina go through uh quite far in this tournament. Yeah. Uh and but this this game in particular is a rematch of the 2014 world cup semi final netherlands versus argentina back in 2014 as well went to the it was in the semi finals it went to the uh, penalties and uh, netherlands lost in the penalties yeah. right uh 
and it's going to be Louis Van Gaal <laughs> in the manager hot seat for Netherlands, and he is he's again uh, brought it uh, to the World Cup in mm-hmm. a way that a tactical masterclass basically yeah. that was seen in the round of 16 Netherlands versus USA. You want to explain a little bit more about that round of 16 match? I I I do remember you giving me a very interesting point from that. Right. So uh, so what happened there was. And before we talk about that game, I actually want to talk about USA's third game uh, against Iran. Okay. Right? So, uh, in that game, USA were had the ball. They were dominating for an extended amount of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they were not able to find the goals. Mm. Uh, Iran had decided, okay, we are going to sit back and try to get that uh, goal, uh, you know, on the counter-attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, but USA could not do much with the ball at all. Mm. Right? Uh, they did get the goal, uh, finally. Yeah. Right? When did that goal go in? I don't know, but it was a 1-0 victory. It was a 1-0 victory, yeah. right? So, if it, they did get the goal, but mm. they didn't do much with the ball. Yeah. I'm sure Louis van Gaal saw this. Mm. Uh, round of 16, he asked his team to just sit back, let USA have the ball, dictate the play. Uh, and Netherlands has the players to kind of keep USA at, at pay, mm. right? Yeah. You got Virgil... Virgil Who's that Liverpool guy? I don't know. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> and Nathan Ake has been pretty good. And defensively, they they also play three at the back. Mm. Uh, so that is working in their yeah, favor pretty as sound. well. Like even Dave Blind, uh, who plays as wing back for them, I guess. He's, yeah. He's more of a centre back actually yeah. nowadays. Yeah. So yeah, I understand what you're coming with that. So in that game, all all Van Gaal did was ask USA to have the ball, and we will hit you on the counter. Mm. And they did. Yeah, and that was purely depicted by who got the crosses and the goals. It was the right wing back. Right. You yeah. expect the right wing back to carry the ball in the yeah. counter and, you know, get those crosses in and, or, you know, come come inside and get yeah. the goal. Yeah, and Dumfries is, 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 a, is a very attacking player. He's yeah. not very defensive in that yeah. sense. Uh, so, yeah, best use of Dumfries, Gakpo, uh, Depay as well, uh, because they've got speed. Mm-hmm. They can run past you uh, with those aerial through balls or even, you know, uh, whipping it as a low cross mm-hmm. as well, right? So, so, what makes this interesting now is the fact that I am not too confident about the Argentinian defense. Hmm. Uh, they they have a slow and old Otamendi. Yeah. And they also have Christian Romero. Yeah. Who is always been sus. He has, yeah. Uh, he's he, he's either going to give you a foul. And, uh, and also the fact that they have probably not faced some of the best teams yet. Mm. Right. 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 That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely Against true. Poland. Uh, Poland only, no? They played? Yeah. Uh, they played Poland in the round of 16. Poland has nothing to show for in their attack. Except like, you know, pass the ball to Lewandowski and pray that he does something. Uh, mm. they, the defense has not had much to do, is what I'm saying, trying to say here. Yeah. And the one time they got, you know, really put under the pump was under by South, Saudi Arabia. Mm. And look how they conceded two goals. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I see the game being played out exactly that way, right? Uh, Netherlands having most of the ball, uh, trying to get... Sorry, I mean Argentina. Argentina having most of the ball, trying to get at Netherlands defense. Uh, Netherlands trying to keep it all tight together and hitting them on the counter. Mm. And that is going to be a, a definite success for Netherlands in my opinion. Mm. Unless. Only unless, <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless you give too many chances to Lionel Messi. Yeah, You give him half a chance, he's yeah. burying it. Yeah. He's okay. burying it into the net. Doesn't okay. matter who is in the defense. Doesn't matter who is in the goal. Mm. He is going to bury it. Simple and straight. And this World Cup, he is a man possessed. Like like we've said before about other players. This man is actually possessed. <laughs> <laughs> Diego's ghost, I guess. <laughs> Diego's ghost, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> you better be careful with the hands as well. Then. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Do you think Argentina can go through? Or uh, Netherlands, you they should, study. right? They should. I mean, on paper, at least they should. But football has never been about on paper. Never. So yeah. you never know. But I'm really excited to see this. You know, like it would be a kick-ass. 
ass match if it plays out the way we've you know <laughs> so far you know gone about uh i think it'll be really mad to see like you know like you know argentina pumping 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 you know the <laughs> defense and yeah. then you know you got your dumb freeze and you got your deong you know spraying those balls mm-hmm. in and out and gakpo running at the defense yeah. it's going to be an exciting match for sure but in my prediction i think argentina should if not must okay look uh, i agree like the heart everybody wants argentina to do well yeah. <laughs> especially messi to do well right agree we all have that soft spot i am a ronaldo fan yeah. even now uh, after all the drama agree but uh, to see messi up there on the finals i would love to see a messi versus ronaldo finals mm. on that front sure argentina but my head says netherlands is going to go through uh, oh. messi can't can't turn up year after year after year after year this could be final goodbye to messi mm 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 so there we have it <laughs> so let us know guys what do you think yeah? uh, do you think argentina might take the edge or will it be netherlands and their tactical masterclass that steals the show yeah next moving on to the third game which mm. is going to be messi's What? mortal enemy <laughs> yeah cristiano ronaldo Cristiano. from the bench <laughs> uh, pretty easy game I'll, i would say mm-hmm. morocco versus portugal morocco pulled off an upset against a very inexperienced espanyol <laughs> uh who love passing the ball around oh 1000 passes in that game bro 1000 passes 70% of the possession uh and oh, one shot one on target one shot on target fuck <laughs> me i even that last like last minute of extra time uh, pablo sarabia comes on and he hits the woodwork mm. and then like few minutes <laughs> later he does the same thing in the penalty uh, this thing as well he hits Where the he post the post again yeah uh, but I, it was uh, very um, but uh, did you watch the game i'm sure you were i i watched the game uh, i watched the penalties i watched here and there of the mm. match but penalties i was definitely watching but i i have to tell you man morocco seems very organized in defense mm. and uh, with hakimi and zh playing on the same side they are a super duper threat mm. like um, hakimi has been playing out of his skin if i can say so and um, boy oh boy where has this player been for the last few years like the last time i remembered him playing so well was when he was in ax right and ever since he's gone to chelsea we've not got to see the best of him right, right. but this world cup for uh, you know forgetting the fact you know keeping aside everything that happened before this as well like he resigned from the national team mm. then the coach left then he came back to play and all that and boy oh boy has he turned up like some kick ass through balls man in fact the m- match against spain they should have had it in the bag before it went to penalties right like it was hakimi and zh creating these uh, chances and unfortunately the striker who came in uh, for buffal uh, who's their left winger and he's uh, sort of their best finisher i would right. say uh, the guy who came in for them was a little too inexperienced and he couldn't finish off those chances he got right. two really really good chances right. but he couldn't bury them so you never know this is what i'm trying to say here <laughs> and you've also got your uh, uh, amrabat 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 oh boy that guy was stepping out at the defense and he was literally pouncing at busquets bro oh, in the wow. match against right. like uh, i mean pedri gavi fuck them bro then <laughs> he'll eat them for like snacks <laughs> he already did yeah portugal portugal hmm, portugal has been playing really well though they they look like the team to beat other than hmm. brazil other than brazil uh, if you look at the teams i mean other than brazil it's been portugal yeah portugal has okay. been the team to beat and they are on the other side of the bracket uh, as well we could very well see a portugal versus brazil uh mm. finals this is this foreshadowing for the world cup finals <laughs> we are we are from the future we already know it <laughs> okay so yeah portugal yeah dude uh, ronaldo when he was playing first few matches in the group stage mm. they were struggling yeah. uh, no pace up front yeah uh but uh, this guy uh, gonzalo ramos gonzalo ramos <laughs> 
has taken his chance oh. with both his hands <laughs> and held on to it so tightly three goals Some in the knockout stage is killer not killer shit bro that joke. was yeah agreed yeah uh, one beautiful left footed shot then that one i don't know i think the second was sort of a tap in i guess right and then third one which he got the penalty just chipped it about <laughs> the keeper and a lot of composure for your first world cup game ever yeah yeah oh uh, and uh, his price has started to soar mm-hmm. benfica is seeing lot of uh, money in their yeah. dreams <laughs> so clouds of dollars all that shit so yeah but the rest of the team as well bro jao felix man the match he had against switzerland right oh uh, fuck i think the last time ev- i've seen jao felix play so well is when i looked at his compilations from his benfica days <laughs> right <laughs> like atletico has not worked out of him worked out for him at all i think it's halted his development if i can say so mm. uh but really good uh, i mean he was taking the ball and running at the swiss players and right. they had no clue as to what was hitting them in fact guys like bernardo silva and you know fernandes bruno fernandes had nothing to do with the way yeah. uh, you know ja- ja- Felix took that game by the scruff of his neck uh, really really wonderful to see him play like that and yeah bro uh, defensively speaking pepe the <laughs> grand daddy of all defenses uh, he's been finding some good form uh, it's not yeah. like he's there for the sake of it he's yeah. actually making a difference yeah lot of experience from the back right so uh, organization header, bro the jump he got on turning the clock back Oof, agreed <laughs> great stuff uh for me that's that's the thing i i genuinely think portugal has too much firepower for morocco mm. to keep at bay yeah. they played against spain not much firepower mm. but asensio yeah. morata when he came on uh not so Uh, didn't not the them. firepower yeah. that they were, can break down a defense i mean spain just played a very bad game yeah. i would say like they hardly got into the box of morocco right. and every time they did they were getting closed down like that i mean morocco can make a game out of this if they are as disciplined as they were against hmm. uh, spain but i see portugal going through man there's yeah. i don't think there's two ways about it no two ways yeah uh, it, see if you look at all of the uh, teams that are there in the quarter finals morocco is your underdog absolute underdog it is the underest dog that a <laughs> dog can be <laughs> and and you'd love to see an underdog story right african team uh going up the ra- african teams have always kind of been in the mix uh, mm. quarter finals sometimes yeah. semi finals yeah. right so it'll be great to see morocco in the semi finals but you, destiny is that ronaldo versus messi final simple and straight for me so that's you meant so you said you are from the future and brazil versus portugal might happen yeah i take <laughs> that back <laughs> i'm i'm split man mind versus heart <laughs> heart says ronaldo versus messi you caught me there but uh, brazil versus portugal more likely mm. we will see but portugal definitely uh, best chance out of this side of the half uh portugal going through to semi finals at least and then oh then the last quarter finals france current champions versus england runner ups in the recently concluded uh, european Rose. tournament uh euro euro championships euros 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 yeah euros <laughs> so yeah what do you think about that one bro i didn't expect france to come till here yeah the curse and all that curse and again there were benzema going out talks about benzema going out there were talks about infighting infighting there were talks pre tournament okay. uh and some know, of the best players are missing as well pogba not there kanté yeah. not there so many injuries yeah lucas hernandez getting injured yeah so many injuries and uh, you would expect them to kind of not have a plan around that mm. but uh, france has always had a team b team and c team <laughs> which can all play in the world cup finals to be fair <laughs> yeah. uh and uh, and yeah i think deschamps has done a pretty good job in bringing this team young team together and good to see them in the quarter finals for sure they've been playing some great football yeah. but one man who's brought them till here who's turned up turned it on has been mbappe 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 <laughs> <laughs> five goals so far He's looking like he's 
hit prime form yeah. if, if he was not in prime form already <laughs> already so he's he's going to leave harry maguire in <laughs> <laughs> shambles <laughs> so uh, uh, luckily for maguire he's not going to be coming up on his side of the pitch yeah he'll have to deal with uh, dembele yeah. who is no less man who is like, no less who has is, not been any lesser yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. absolute killer dribbling and mad crossing yeah yeah left footed cross just fly in and land on jiru's head <laughs> <laughs> so uh they've got but oh god this this match is i think the big hardest one to predict 50 50 you know right it's a toss of a coin yeah. because england even though going into the tournament they were not really the favorites right. for me at least uh, but they have somewhat turned up like uh, especially that match against uh, senegal which i thought they would kind of shit the bed right but they played the best match of the of the tournament tournament yeah. so far uh, in the group stages when england were playing uh, especially that usa game 0-0 mm. 0-0 i felt okay there really isn't much firepower here yeah. uh, they are not going to get the goals that they want when when you come into the crunch uh, stage of the tournament which is quarter finals i didn't think they might have it i i still kind of think that because of one man all of our discussions are kind of revolving around one key linchpin in every team right yeah uh, and for me in england the linchpin uh, who's going to decide whether england goes through or not is going to be gareth southgate mm. who's not going to be on the pitch but on the sidelines mm. it does he have the balls to attack france when they need to be attacked If you're going to sit back against France and give too many chances nah. to Mbappe nah, not going to happen. And Giroud is also in prime form yep. like you said, right? Yeah. So Griezmann's been playing very well just behind Giroud. Yeah. Uh, I I don't I don't think they would they'd have too much of a chance sitting back sitting back yeah. waiting for shit to happen. And so far Gareth Southgate has shown that he is capable of uh making those defensive moves. Uh, Rashford best attacking player so far for England in the World Cup benched when it comes to round of 16. Yeah. Sure sure the team turned up you scored three goals uh, whatever but uh, when it, when you're playing against France you need your team well gelled well gelled to know what uh, tactics you're going to play. Yeah. Now I think this is going to leave them in more confusion that the fact that you left your best player so far in the tournament Rashford uh Rashford out and then you get someone else and uh, I don't know who was playing left wing for them Foden. Uh, Foden Foden was playing left wing and Saka was playing right wing so are you going to go with that I mean Saka knowing that he has experience playing left back as well mm. uh, mm. the very start of his career uh, do you think you'd sort of use that to counter Mbappe who is going to be a constant mm. threat from that side right. and you Ford, mean you mean right back right wing back as Yeah, right wing or right right, right winger is where Saka played right. last match. So you use both Saka and uh, Walker on that side right. to keep Mbappe and Theo Hernandez at bay, or do you switch to Rashford and make that aggressive choice and you know go with the go with how the form has been so far? Mm. Tough man. I mean, I mean, Foden's been playing well as well from the left side, and that is his best position Correct. for City or for England. Right. So, so uh, you know, I was questions. I was listening to a different podcast, the T4 podcast, right? Mm-hmm. And they were talking about the attributes that Foden brings and the attributes that Rashford brings. Mm-hmm. And they had a really good point when they said Foden likes the ball to his feet. Mm-hmm. He's not your runner. runner. He's not going to run the channel and expect the through ball and go finish it. That's that's Rashford for you. Mm-hmm. He's going to he's going to run behind the defense. Yeah. But Foden is the man who's going to want the ball to your to his feet. a uh, plain tight spaces create space uh, make moves where you create space for your uh, left back as well right when it comes to france senegal of course senegal you expect senegal to sit back yeah. uh, against england a little bit a little at least bit. right which is so foden playing there kind of makes sense mm. um against france so you bring back rashford again you better have excellent man management skills to make sure that all these players are you know tuned in Mm. uh not worried about losing their place or not losing their place and play for the team yeah agreed Can- agreed with the way i think france are going to go about it i think rashford will have space to attack behind the defense yeah 
and with Kane like he's been dropping back so much uh, so far for England yeah uh, you or, need that yeah you can uh, i think you need a rashford in your team to make those runs for yeah. kane's through balls or jude bellingham's passes that's one man we haven't spoken about yet oh, jude yeah. hey jude hey jude <laughs> <laughs> oh jude <laughs> anyways so jude jude's been killing it right so oh. he is oh boy what a player bro <laughs> like i i'm i hate myself for not watching dortmund's games like right. not knowing much about this player like i always knew that there's this jude bellingham wonder kid killing it for uh, you know his jersey has been retired by his yeah. <laughs> birmingham birmingham yeah. rovers uh, and a 17 year old moving out of birmingham and his jersey is retired that's <laughs> unheard of yeah that's yeah. absolutely unheard of i hope that liverpool don't get him Yeah. I see a lot of bromance happening between him, Jordan, and yeah, Henderson and Trent as well. <laughs> Fuck no, <laughs> because that will that will definitely not play well for yeah. us. Yeah, hopefully they don't have the money to get him. That's the uh, only thing that can stop <laughs> them, I guess. Yeah. Now that we're talking about England, I'm kind of getting the feeling that England might have enough in the bag to go past France. Hmm. France I would say is highly dependent on their front three yeah 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 Agreed. but defense has not been tested yet not they played tested. australia they played uh, croatia i think mm-hmm. no not croatia they I played they had a relatively easy group relatively well. easy group denmark mm. uh, they had a few of those games as well uh, france in round of 16 they played they had tunisia and all tunisia as well they had yeah but they lost tunisia didn't they Oh yeah, they did. But of course, that was uh, game yeah, number that, three, and that and was I think France C team playing. C team <laughs> playing, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say France defense not tested so far. Mm, yeah. Over the course of this conversation, I'm convinced a little bit more. Mm-hmm. When I, I we were at fifty fifty at the beginning, now I'm thinking England might just yeah. have seventy to thirty over France. I would say sixty forty to England. Really? Yeah. You are also convinced that yeah. England is going yeah. to Yeah, because I think there's a huge hole when it comes to France midfield. Right. And that is where Jude and Bellingham and Kane dropping in or Shaw also playing as an inverted full back is going to help England dominate that area of the pitch which is you know then going to let them dominate further up the pitch right. which also is kind of I would say not so great for France. I don't think it's a defense that has played much Uh, together, mm. for sure. Yeah. Like even on the national level, as seldom as they may play, you expect some kind of uh, stability in the yeah. selection there. Even in the World Cup level, this tournament, mm. game one you didn't have Varane playing. Yeah. Game two you had Varane playing, but game three you were playing Varane with another player mm. uh, in the back. I don't know. Uh, and then yeah, <laughs> so constantly shifting and uh, changing. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Who knows? End of the day. England versus France I think it's going to be down to France's defense versus Southgate's defensive mindset. Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. I think it all it will come down to keep him keeping if England has to win, they have to somehow try and work out a way to keep Mbappe quiet. Yeah. Uh because aerially you can probably see Shaw or Maguire handle Dembele. uh because with his crosses i'm sure maguire will get to them first before giroud does uh but keeping mbappe quiet is going to be absolutely necessary henderson i would say is capable of you know keeping uh griezmann a little bit out of the game right and yeah. i can totally see jude bellingham dominating uh chumeni and further up the pitch so yeah it looks like more of england <laughs> yeah. Interesting battle for sure. I think this is yeah, it's going to be the game big that one. is going to be filled with battles all yeah. over the pitch. And I won't be surprised if it ends up zero zero and then penalties because both of them are scared of okay, mm, what's going to that come. That has been the approach. There right. has been Indeed, a little bit sure, of yeah. yeah cautious approach for sure. It's a knockout game, and uh, both teams w- definitely want to get to the next stage, yeah. of course. Yeah. so they might be cautious about the way they go through as well so yeah you never know on that note i would love to know what our viewers think uh, do you think croatia can go into the finals again like last year can we see france versus croatia in the finals again rematch a rematch of oh, sorts no, that. that's 
<laughs> that's possible uh i'm sure you guys love your uh, national team that you're supporting let us know in the comments below which team is is it that you are supporting uh we f- i am i for sure i'm rooting for portugal and brazil as a finals uh what about you i think i want brazil to win i'll tell you why okay. i thought about this few days ago okay so like how we spoke about how argentina winning or portugal winning is going to mark the end of the debate of who's the goat right okay and i don't want that to happen right <laughs> and neymar gets a lot of shit correct right and for me i would love to see neymar win the world cup and silence those uh critics at least right for a bit and yeah. you know you know shut the world cup trophy at their face yeah. there are a lot of deserving players in brazil who yeah you know who deserve sure. to live the world cup as well yeah. and the main thing of course has to be not settling that goat debate for me Mm. or instead adding one more into the mix oh why not oh why and not? If, if from today if neymar then goes on to win the champions league ballon d'or bro ballon d'or mm. greatest player on the planet ever probably not I probably mean, not he does like his sister a little bit too much <laughs> <laughs> which is why he's been gone yeah, missing so a few games after jan we'll see <laughs> him go yeah. uh, anyway but yeah for me that's the reason why i do not want either of them probably lifting the world cup mm. i mean not don't want it's like i'm not rooting for them rooting for them so that's the reason why i chose brazil definitely to fair play them. fair play uh you let us know what you guys think uh is going to be the finals for this world cup an exciting world cup has reached to this point where all the best teams are going to play against each other best players against each other yeah. uh asians impressed did you were you impressed with the asian teams let us know in the comments below what impressed you the most which team do you think underperformed in this world cup let us know in the comments below on that note please like share subscribe and see you in the next one